on who YouTube. shot you uh. what's the word that's your man stop shot you we here at the lighthouse lounge <laughs> slick record <Rackers laughs> studios lighthouse lounge yeah that is a fact man yo quick question you ever have to unfollow somebody because they look mad good and you just tired of lusting over their pictures yes i have <laughs> yeah. want me to tell you about it yeah <laughs> um, yeah that's happened um <laughs> There was this model online and like she's fire, mm. nice body. It's the built body though. It's like, you know, she went and got surgery for her shit. Uh, but then one day she posted herself pregnant and, and getting engaged. <laughs> I was like, nah, you're doing too fucking much. <laughs> she's gonna go for, yeah. right, right now. Unfollow. I, I'm having this with this fluffy shorty. She was like fluffy, but she's like unfortunately fluffy. Like, okay. you know, nice to you. Yeah. And they were like, I tried to holler at her. And uh, what you call it? And, you know, I, and I'm gonna everything like that we talk, but just she just seemed that interested. So I was just like, you know what, you ain't on my dick enough to, you know, where I need you to be on my dick. And so I gotta, you know what I'm saying? What I'm saying? But this, yeah, so I so I fell back, but you know, she's still on my Twitter and shit. So she be posting mad pictures and shit. And I'll be like, uh, it's just be mad lusty, and I just wanna say mad thirsty shit. Yeah. And I was like, nah, that's never been my style. So I'm not gonna follow or me. Mute, 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 mute. You mute, mute, mute. definitely mute her. <laughs> Things could turn around. It's just like sometimes you just need a vacation from seeing her shit. Yeah, facts. Yeah, you feel what, me? It's what yeah, you. Yeah, you, you know feel me? me? Like, why you doing that? Yeah, yeah. Right, right. <laughs> Yo, man, Lighthouse, what's good, man? Appreciate you, bro. I'm good, man. Oh, man. Yo, so we are, um, what's this, like our third, fourth interview? This is probably our third one. This is our third one, yeah. man. And this time we are here to talk about your new album that you have dropped, man. So yes. can you let the people know what uh, what's the name of the album? The album is called Temperance. Mm -hmm. And um, I'm super excited about it. Like, I'm really just, oh, man, it's like a moment of catharsis because, like, I'm able to release this body of work. And it's very introspective and, like, um, mm. super... Um, like vulnerable i'm like really sharing like my deepest like i never got this vulnerable before mm -hmm. in a project so it's like you know me challenging myself creatively to just share more because mm -hmm. um i try to uh, distinguish between my personal life mm -hmm. and my entertainment life mm -hmm. and this is like the first project where i'm just like sharing something that was affecting me it's a small portion of what i did but it's like you know how did all right so for you how does that feel because like for me um that is like my that's what i do you know what i'm saying when i'm working by myself you know like um i like putting like personal things out there not for shock value you know i want people to learn and to understand that you know you don't have to be perfect you get what i'm saying and like for me coming from like a west indian household i know like we've made a lot of things to just we set up to make everything look perfect we want everything to look as perfect as possible mm -hmm. and when i realized i didn't necessarily have to live that standard because we're all fucked up in some way yeah. it became freeing and the art just came flowing and pouring but for you this being your first time what made you take the risk and how did it feel after you took the risk um what made me do it was just like um i kind of got to a point where i just had creative block mm -hmm. and um with that, I just asked myself, like, am I giving enough? Like, am I sharing? Like, you know, I want my music to be genuine and really come from a real place, whether it's entertainment and it's in, like, fantasy or whatever it is, whatever it is, I would just want it to come from a real place. And I was stuck, and I was listening to, like, a bunch of old stuff that I was going to put on another project. And one song in particular called Viceroy, which is the last song in the project, kind of influenced the rest of the album mm -hmm. for um, Temperance. So... Mm -hmm. I just decided, yo, you know what? Let me just build something around this because this is something that I was dealing with. And like, you know, I felt like I needed to address, you know, because it was, it, it did, the, 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 the premise of the project is that it deals with alcoholism and mm -hmm. like, you know, my struggles with it as a result of the 2020 lockdown. So I just wanted to do something that kind of could speak to the human condition that people could possibly relate to. And that's pretty much what made me say, you know what, let me just dig deep and just get into that and share that with somebody in hopes that it inspires people to want to gain or achieve sobriety. And that's why we're drinking on camera. Yeah, 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 yeah. I mean, listen, the, the point of it all was just to um, get to a point of balance because, um, you know, it was like I was drinking every day. Like, I was drinking multiple bottles of this. I don't even want to show who it is, but, like, <laughs> I I supported this business a lot <laughs> to the point, literally, where the bottle is, like, a good tequila. It was, like, 
nineteen dollars and this shit is twenty seven dollars now. Because I've been, me and yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I've been plugging. I've been telling people like, yo, this is a real. And they they rebranded. They made the the, the shit look good and lux and all of that. <laughs> I hit them up. I emailed them like, yo, what's up, man? You know, I don't like to be the type of person that's like, yo, y'all gotta support me because I've been giving them free promotion. But yeah. I'm like, yo, let's try to explore something. I probably just have to hit somebody directly who handles that and see what's up with it. So, um, all right, then. So, for me, um, this isn't your first vulnerable project. I think uh, appreciation kind of was, and I do believe, but it was vulnerable in a different way. Appreciation was, was the one I did with Benny, Billboard Benny. You oh, appreciate. Oh, no, I'm sorry. Um, family first. Family first. Okay, I'm sorry. So, um, excuse yeah, me. Excuse me. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Yeah. Family first. That was probably your first vulnerable one, yeah. but it was vulnerable in a different way. It was more of a celebration in which men don't normally necessarily like celebrate other, like family, right. family in general. Um, so I think that was it. And to me, that's still like my favorite body of work from you. I tell you all the time, I think it's a classic personally. You know, Appreciate I can go that. back and listen to it. There's no skips to it. And I don't really say that to too many people that, you know, that I sit across from, you know, so that's not something to be taken lightly. I'm dead serious about that. Absolutely. Uh, so, um, did you learn anything from that project to now? Like, have, is there any, like, what would be like the growth or what did you take from that? Cause like I said, I personally think that's your best body of work. Um, with 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 family first, um, it's really like a demonstration. I felt challenged at that point. I felt like somebody said something one time about my artistry, and I just had to prove to myself and to whoever was listening mm -hmm. that you know, despite being a musician and an artist, mm -hmm. I'm still like an A and R. I can put a project together. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. So that was one where I really honed in and made sure that all the production was cohesive and everything sounded good. And what I learned from that is that I could do a body of work that has a central point to it, a concept, so sort of like a conceptual project. So mm -hmm. like from that, all of my shit has to be conceptual. I want to give you a story. I don't mm -hmm. want to just throw songs on a project and just put it out. Mm -hmm. um, I want people to like actually listen to the music and, and take something from it. Mm -hmm. So that's what I learned. And it was like, you know what, this works for me mm -hmm. because I have people like yourself who I respect their air and they, they, they all vibed with it mm -hmm. on a certain level. So I'm like, you know what, this might be what, what works for me mm -hmm. and I'm going to just try to make this better. Mm -hmm. So temperance is that, but just from a perspective of someone who's dealing mm -hmm. with Alcoholism. I got you. Um, the first single was Cut Off. It was the Cut Off, right? Was no. That? Cut Off was just a standalone single. Uh -huh. The first single for this was Fly Shit Only. Fly Shit Only. Okay. Yeah. So Fly Shit Only is essentially just like, it, when you listen to the project, it's a sequence of me like actually dealing with drunkenness mm -hmm. and then my realization that I'm drunk and like I want to do better for myself mm -hmm. and then ascending to a level where I'm aware of it. And I'm actually practicing sobriety, so it's a journey. You know what I mean? Yeah. So, fly shit only kind of is in the reckless part of the project where you know your drinking causes you to just do haphazard shit where yeah. you're not, you know, you're not putting the best thoughts forward. You're just talking reckless. So it's just mm. like a little bit of me, you know, just flexing my lyrical shit, mm. but just in a party setting. Like the beat is kind of like more high tempo, you know. I got you. Yeah. So when you put so much work into a project, are you nervous about releasing it? Um, sometimes, yeah. But then, like, once it comes together and, like, once I get, like, the people who opinion matters the most to hear it and they're like, yeah, this is it, mm -hmm. then my confidence is through the roof and it's just like... I did this and it's like people with sound minds can appreciate what I did and it don't sound crazy. Mm -hmm. I'm putting it out there. I'm confident because, um, you know, within my circle um, or like within people who know me locally or whatever, you know what I'm saying? It might could go over their heads or it might just be like, yo, we know you. Like this is a different kind of artistry or they might not perceive it a certain way. But there's people who I don't know, don't know me globally who can come across my music and be like, yo, this shit is fire and it, it resonates with them. And like, that, those are the people that I try to like reach out to, you know what I mean? Like mm -hmm. I've met complete strangers online who like say that they listen to my music every day and like they wake up to it. Like, you know, I got people that I fuck with, that I vibe with who's like, yo, 
I vibe with your music. Like, this is my alarm clock. You know what I'm saying? Like, this is what I wake up to. So, like, that's what I do it for. And then, you know, eventually, once you, like, conquer the outside, you come home and everyone celebrates you. you know that's so, a so hero. Yeah, I'm a hometown hero, but I got to conquer the outside first. And it's all good. That's a part of the game. Everyone goes through it. Mm -hmm. So, um, of course, you have your own label. Yes. Um, how does that work? Like, how do you spend, how do you divvy up your time on your project? but also spend time with your artists? Um, it comes down to time management. Um, me, I love being in the, um, the, the the driver's side and doing my own thing, but I also love fostering um, other people's careers and just helping them get their shit out. So, like, you know, when it's time for me to work on Courtney Berry's music, mm -hmm. I'm working on her stuff and I'm mixing it. I'm, I'm very in tune with it. Mm -hmm. When working on B Nova stuff, I'm very in tune with it. And any other artists that I've worked with, you know, in terms of consulting and doing A and R work with them or executive producing, mm -hmm. I lock in and I give them a hundred percent. But you know, there's 132 hours in a week. There's enough time for me to get to everybody's shit and still get to mine. So it's just about time management. Oh, that's dope. Yeah. I got you. So um, as far as Teflon's goes, why, when are we looking at? We looking at merch, videos? What are we looking at? Yeah. So I already have um, three videos. Yeah, I have about three videos. I'm looking to shoot a couple of more of them. Mm -hmm. um, the project is actually dropping on December 26th. Mm -hmm. um, that's, and I'm shipping the physical copies. People have already pre-ordered it. So I'm shipping um, those out on the 27th. Um, I have some merch coming out. I'm going to be putting on cassette, CD, and vinyl. Mm -hmm. For those that don't know, those are actually viable. Um, uh, Source products, sources of income. <laughs> like people are actually buying that stuff. I know people. People always say, "Are you selling CDs?" I'm like, "Yeah." Hmm. I could show you a text message where one of my homies from college. Hmm. He does not fuck with technology. Hmm. He's like, I don't have any streaming things. I don't do that. He has a CD player that he walks around with and puts AA batteries in, mm. and he appreciates CDs. And he's like, this is the first time I'm actually going to be able to listen to your music because you have it on CD. I'm like, bro, I've had all my projects on CD, so you're going to have to start <laughs> copping up. So he's with it. He's going he, he to actually um, buy some stuff from me and stuff mm. and like support the rest of the uh, label and everything because he likes what we do. And um, yeah, man, merchandise with shirts. Um, we're going to have stickers, you know, uh, you know, I'm not going to sell the stickers, but, you know, that's going to come with yeah, the merch. merch yeah, but, yeah, okay, we okay. definitely want to have, like, a full rollout and build this project. It's like, I'm not going to drop it and just forget about it. Okay, so, we, okay, so we're going to stay on it for a little yeah, bit. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. I'm going to work this one. And I'm going to be dropping other songs, too, mm. as singles. So but, we might get a deluxe? Um, I don't know if it's going to be a deluxe. This kind of just stands alone, but I just want to still kind of grow things because I'm not putting this out on, like, streaming platforms like that. I'm going to sell it independently through my site. I have like a, a, a goal, a benchmark of what I want to reach in terms of money for mm -hmm. selling it. Once I reach that, then yeah, I'll put, I'll it, put on. it out. Okay. Yeah, you know what I'm saying? Gotcha. So however long that takes, that's when y'all see it. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> that's when y'all see it on Spotify and all of that. But yeah. I do that because um, you know, Spotify doesn't really pay artists as much, you know what I mean? So it's like I put a lot of time and effort into this mm -hmm. and I just wanna make sure that, you know, I make my money back from it, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. So yeah. That's fine. I got you. So, yo, man, when we, we dropping our Slick Shot, your project, man, we got we to we gotta put something together, man. Listen, man, we could do this one now. We, you know, <laughs> this is what we do, man. This is what we do. Listen, man. man we, you got we me have, inspired, man. We have work to be done, man. We yeah. have music to put out. We actually have a whole project. project. Yeah, man. We got to finish that up. So, but, yeah. Whenever, whenever. That's a fact, man. So, 2023, man. We got to. Put something together. Hell yeah. yeah put something together. Hell yeah. You know, we're going to work on something. Um, your brother, um, are you working with him? Yes. I'm actually, um, me and my big bro, A.A. Rashi, we have um, a bunch of stuff that um, we're going to start doing and, like, you know, putting it together. You know what I mean? It's like, he's not a rapper, you know what I'm mm. saying? But he happens to just do art and it comes out as rap mm. over beats. Mm -hmm. So, it, like, you know, whenever he's in the mood, we record something. Mm. We've had songs together. I always think it's dope because it's like we're born in the same day. He's eight years older than me. Mm -hmm. I make beats. He taught me about hip hop. He's my entry level. He's my teacher into music. So, like, mm -hmm. I'm kind of advanced 
when it comes to my peers because I grew up with hip hop before they was able to, you know, have it. Unless you had a big brother or your pops was into hip hop like that, mm. people kind of got into it in the 90s where I was listening to this shit from like 82, like when I was, I was a kid. Mm -hmm. It was contraband in my house. My mom used to break rackets. If we brought hip hop in here, she was like, get this garbage out of here. <laughs> Cracking this shit. Like, mm. it was crazy. You know what I mean? Mm. Kids got it so good. Y'all can just put your <laughs> headphones on. Parents don't know what you listening to. <laughs> we had the tape. We listened to this shit. We had to put that shit on low and like we rock into it. Like, so I appreciate hip hop for that. But um, yeah, we working on some shit. We gonna have some shit coming out. Yeah, I got you, man. I right, man. And um, on a personal, on a personal, how how's the drinking now? Let's see, the drinking has gotten better. Um, mm. you know. It was bad before, like, it was like, you know, I had to have a sip here and there, like, you know, and it was just getting to a point where it was just like, I was like, damn, so I'm an alcoholic, you know what I mean? Like, <laughs> it hit you. When did, what was it, what was, what was the moment when it hit you? Like, my shorty was like, yo, damn, you drink too much. It was just like, you know, I was just getting, you know, the littlest things used to get me upset and I just would like lash out and just, mm -hmm. Acting out of character, just acting like a fucking uh, a piece, a degenerate, and it's just like the same me. Like I know my mom's transitioned, like you know, eight years ago, mm -hmm. and it's just like I know she would be ashamed of, of me, mm -hmm. just going at it like this. You know what I'm saying? So mm -hmm. it's just like being self-reflective and just wanting to always improve upon myself and just be a better person. And just like yo. I can't be doing this shit. Like, this shit ain't even cool. Like, this shit don't look good. Mm. Your body be feeling crazy. Like, you know, mm. waking up and you, you, you can't wake up. Like, I usually wake up at like like seven in the morning. So waking up at like one o'clock is crazy for me. You know what I mean? But mm. it's like, if you got a hangover, you, yeah, you want to go back to sleep. You got to just sleep that shit over, drink some water. Mm. So I'm just wasting time and it's affecting my business. So it's just mm. affecting my daily life. So I'm just like, I got to slow this shit down. Like, I'm not saying I'm going to stop, but I want to stop eventually, but mm. I got to a point where it's like I can function. It's not affecting me. Like, I don't have to. I don't need it. I don't feel like I need it. Like, there was a point where I was like, I need to drink something. Like, mm. if my house was dry, mm. I'm like, nah, I got to go out somewhere and get a beer. I got. I was drinking anything, man. Like, mm. wine. Like, mm. you, you an alcoholic when you drink anything, bro. Like, eat, <laughs> drinking bum shit, too. Like, <laughs> Ian, Ian mm. and I don't know, not, not shit on nobody who fuck with Ian J, but like, that is not by choice. <laughs> yeah, by choice. Like, come on, man. Somebody got their crib, throw some orange juice in it, some whatever. Yeah, yeah. That's different. But like, when you be like, yo, you got a little nip of that. Let me get a little bump of that. I was like, yo, I was just on some fiend shit. So I was like, nah, hmm. I'm going to start losing teeth. I'm going to look crazy out here, man. You know? You're going to start getting the shakes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm like, you know, like, you know what I mean? So, yeah, facts. Mm. Yeah. I got you, man. Yo, um, I appreciate the honesty, man. Um, this was dope, man. Can you let the people know how they can purchase the album? Because you said it's not going to immediately be on DSPs. Yeah, so how we're going to be releasing it is through my uh, website. It's Slick Boutique. That's S-L-I-Q-U-E Boutique. B-O-U-T-I-Q-U-E dot com. Mm -hmm. um, and it's going to be over there. And I'm going to have... Um, I'm gonna have it on uh what's this shit called? Um just follow me on Instagram. Um I'm gonna have it on another site where you could actually like choose what you wanna pay for it. You know what I'm saying? So oh, if you wanna okay. like Nipsey. Yeah, it's okay. like if you wanna pay five dollars, ten dollars, fifty dollars, whatever. Mm. I accept it all. Mm. I just want people to listen to it and just like hear what I was going through and hopefully be inspired, share with somebody else who probably going through it, you know, because mm. I've already told people about it, like, damn, like, this is what we need, you know, like, mm. just things that speak to humanity, like, you yeah. know, this is, like, relatable shit. a lot of shit. people still recovering from the pandemic, you know what that I'm saying? That shit fucked we us still up. In a, we did, like, I just seen, or what you call it, uh, shout out to my brother, Cree. Uh, he just put out, like, damn, he was like, yo, this Meg and Tori shit just keep taking us back to 2020. We want to be over that time period. Word. Yeah. It's <laughs> some real shit. Shout out to Cree, bro. Mm -hmm. Word. That's it's a, some real shit. That's a um, Yeah, man. Uh, Yeah, I just want to, you know, I'm going to have it out there for y'all. It's going to be on my website, lighthouse.com. That's L-I-G-H-T-H-O-U-5-E.com. Mm -hmm. Um, yeah, man, follow me, Book Lighthouse, B-O-O-K, Lighthouse, L-I-G-H, 
O U five E. Yeah. Replace the S with a five. Replace the S with a five. Yeah. That's a fact. And um, you know, I have all information there. Um, just want y'all to check it out and just hopefully take something from it. You know what I'm saying? That's a fact, man. Or, That's a fact. I appreciate you, bro. I appreciate you yeah, too. Yeah, Thank right. you for your time, my brother. Man, it. Oh, this was dope, man. So I'm looking forward to hearing it, man. I want to hear the whole thing through yeah. through as a collective body, man. Yeah. I'm gonna let you know exactly how I feel about it. I already, I already, I already know you know, man. Like, listen, <laughs> you listen, know, I keep it a bean with you. Keep it a bean for sure. That's a fact, man. What's the guess? Your man Slash Shot, you here? Off back outside, man. Appreciate you having me over. Yeah. Uh, see you behind the camera, as always, as usual, man. And we out. Yeah. Who shot y'all?